where he might sign, Dez responded that he'd rather, quote, be with the Cowboys than a new team. And as crazy as it sounds, I think he'd be, I think that's a good move for the Cowboys. I think Dez Bryant's been humbled. I think that there's no risk to bring any man. If he doesn't work out, you just let him go again. Uh, I, I, I think there's no, it's a no-lose situation for the Cowboys. I'd pick up Des Bryant for cheap and cut him if he didn't work out. I think it would be a bad situation. Humility is not even a part of the equation. It's a bad marriage. It's a bad second marriage if you're Des Bryant. He doesn't have Tony Romo anymore, who was a franchise quarterback, a risk taker, uh, outside the pockets, off-script playmaker. Now he has a conservative, safe a third-year player who's still trying to play for his money and averaging 215 yards per game and safe throws and needs the running game to be beyond explosive for him to show uh, elite numbers in production. So I think that Des Bryant would come back and uh, he wasn't separating before. Whether he could do that now or not, he's not getting the 50-50 balls. Romo would throw a 50-50 ball. If you didn't catch it, I could deal with the results, the consequences. Dak Prescott's not in that mental space right now. I think it would be a bad marriage. Yeah, I'm with – I think I'm with you. I, I think they have enough receivers that can't beat one-on-one -on -one coverage right now. Um, can he <laughs> – can, like, can, can he play offensive line? I mean, uh, if he come back and do that, I mean, isn't that, isn't that what we're looking at? I mean, I look at this team, the way this team was constructed years ago. You had one of the best left tackles in football in Smith. He had a great offensive line. Now Smith has chronic back issues. You got a rookie playing left guard. Your center is gone. Your all-pro center and Travis Frederick is sick. Uh, your right guard, who is the highest paid guy in football, hurt his knee in camp and is not 100% healthy. And Collins, your right tackle, is really better suited to play guard. So that, that's how they built this football team, to dominate a line of scrimmage, to run the football, to give your receivers opportunities to be one-on-one -on -one off the play action and, and affecting the underneath coverage because you have to respect it. And they don't have that anymore. So I, I don't know how Des Bryant's going to fix that. I, I just don't think he will. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I am with it too. Would it, would it be nice? Yeah, it would be nice, but I, I don't see how it helps them win football games. And the ultimate uh, thing that they did when they got rid of Des was because it was the distraction in the locker room. It was having a young guy in Dak Prescott that you're trying to say, hey, this is your, your team. You know, no more Jason Witten. Sean Lee's on the way out of there. You get Dez Bryant out of there now, too. And now you can say, hey, young guys, it's on you guys. And so I just don't know. It's kind of that same dynamic you saw in Carolina when they kind of rushed Steve Smith out of there a little bit too soon to mm -hmm. let Cam know, hey, this is your team. I just don't know if the progression of Dak Prescott with Dez Bryant in his ear would be a positive thing. Same. But if they brought him back, does this mean, hey, maybe Dak's not the guy? Maybe he's not who we thought – he, he was going to be, and it's okay if we have a guy like Dez in that locker room. So there's a lot of different components to this that, that I just don't see how it would work out, but it, it'll be interesting if he goes back. My thing with the Cowboys and Jerry Jones is, like, they're always in win-now mode, and y'all are talking about developing young receivers, developing Dak. Jerry Jones, to me, is about, I want to win this year. And, and if Dez Bryant in any way gives them a chance to be 2% better wide receiver, 3% better wide receiver, and because it's an easy out, I just don't see what the harm is. Their rece and again, I, I get your point, Mark. It's like it's just another receiver that can't separate. Hmm. I, I think if Des Bryant were in the right mindset, like previous, six months ago, eight months ago, mm -hmm. in the right mindset, willing to take – a reduced contract, and humble himself and not be a distraction, there's upside to Dez Bryant. Man, stop. Uh, they went to a concert, a Beyonce <laughs> concert together, and he ain't get a deal. If you listen to Beyonce with your owner, and yo, you can't get a deal after that, you know what? It ain't happening, man. They already laid out the red carpet in terms of their relationship. We have mended that. And nothing came from that. So this is a situation where you're overthinking it. Like, it's a great story. D'Angelo nailed it. Great story. Not going to do much in terms of the X's and O's. Don't overthink this. They've been in a win-now mode, like you said, <laughs> since uh, Jimmy Johnson was coaching there. And how much winning now have they done yeah. since yeah, that point? I would say that. I That's mean, always like, the goal, but it, yeah. it, it, it never seems to materialize. And if Jerry Jones 
actually looked at this roster, it, it, this roster isn't set to right. Win the right O line's now. not there. It's the defense not, is coming, but yeah. not there yet to play to that standard. All you got is Zeke that you really can bank on right now, and then you got some pass rushes like Demarcus Lawrence, et cetera. But that's not enough. Not not in today's game. Not with today's ammunition that's coming from the yeah, quarterback. Yeah, when the Rams putting who they got out there, man, <laughs> man, oh, Dallas don't have playing. a chance. Man. All right. no. Jones likes him and is adverse to starting over with a new coach. He is comfortable with Garrett and may think this is as close as he will ever get to adding head coach to his many titles. And so, you know, Gary's position is that Jason's the perfect puppet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that Jerry Whoa. is comfortable with that. And I, I don't, I, I, th I don't think it's a puppet deal. I think Jerry has heard the criticism that early on he was too quick to fire coaches, too quick to fire coaches, and he believes in continuity and stability. And, he, you know, to me, I think he's maybe sticking with Jason Garrett too long, but I don't think he's afraid or adverse to fire Jason Garrett. I think it'll happen this year if the season doesn't go well. Um, I'm with you. Like, stability comes before success. Even in the dictionary, coaches should say that message. So here's the thing. <laughs> I'm looking at this like you need to create a stable culture and the turnover because of lack of results and success, you've always had turnover. And it's finally like, look, I have a coach who's intelligent, who keeps his players in line for the most part. Let's just think about it. outside of Des Bryant. I can't name all the issues that's going on with them within that locker room. I can't. And then this is a coach that not only does those things right, but is better than the average coach and whatever your criticisms of him is. He hasn't had a ton of great pieces on that roster consistently to manufacture consistent excellence. He just hasn't. So instead of saying, okay, get rid of the coach, and then we go back, and then we're going to look at Dak next year and say maybe he's not a franchise quarterback, just keep one standstill and then try to address other needs. Here's my issue and why I don't think Dallas will ever win the way they're currently constructed. Because it's one thing to appoint a coach, another thing to empower a coach. Mm. And if you don't empower your employees to do their job, guess what? You will never win. If there is always a back staircase to the owner's office to circumvent any situation, you won't win. I know this about players, and I was a player, and you guys were players. Um, you give us an inch, we'll take a mile. Mm -hmm. And there's got to be somebody in charge. And if you feel like that guy that, that they've, uh, they've appointed but not empowered has no power, he's been emasculated, and you go straight over his head to the owner to get something done, then players will do that. And if that's the situation, I believe that to be the situation, you're just you're, – you're, you may have a season where you win some games. You may have a season where you're a playoff team, but you will not consistently win when that is the structure of your organization. See, I don't know if that's what's going on in Dallas because I, too, having played against Dallas for all those years, you know, I can't – it kind of got lost, the records. You know, I was just worried about the game itself. Mm -hmm. But then when I go back and look, Jason Garrett took over in the middle of 2010, 5-3. and 8-8, eight and 8-8, 8-8, eight, eight and 12-4, eight, eight and 4-12 eight, and, four, four and 12 with Tony Romo, hurts his uh, collarbone twice. Right. 13-3, and 9-7, and, and he's 2-2 two and two this year. I'm not seeing a coach or a team that's 4-12 and 12 or 5-, and you know. Yeah. I'm not seeing that. This right. team has been consistently average. They haven't been great. They've average. been great. They've been great at times. And so I think they have the pieces. I don't know the dynamic that goes on in that locker room or with that organization, but I know what I've heard of Jerry Jones. And I know he tends to have his hand hands in the cookie jar a little bit, making decisions and always around. And so I don't know if that's kind of what you're talking about, Mark, as far as taking some of the power away from uh, Jason Garrett. But when I see him on the field and he's commanding that team, I feel as though he has power. I feel as though... Those guys follow him. Um, yeah, I can. You know, echo he that. doesn't have some of the same voices echoing what he's said in years past because a lot of those guys have moved on. You know, your Jason Witten, your uh, Dez Bryant, Tony. You know, he's been. But gone he a suffers while. from the optics. Let's be real. If Jerry Jones is in the room, he's gonna suck the oxygen, and we're gonna think he commands everything. He's like, one of those type of guys. It's not always that dynamic. And let's be real about NFL football. This is why you don't want to chase your tail. This is why you don't want to get rid of your coach every single year. Since the Patriots have been dynastic, 0-1, only three teams have won over half the Super Bowls. I'm going to say it again. Of all the Super Bowls that have occurred since Tom Brady became the man, 
only three teams, and that's the Patriots, that's the Giants, and Steelers, have commanded over half the Super Bowls. That means 29 other franchises out there, you're going to be chasing your tail if you keep getting rid of your coach because there are not a lot of opportunities to win. They're commanded by a few stable franchises. The rest of you guys, try and stay pat and get a one-off if you're the Saints. Get a one-off yeah. if you're other teams. But most of that is already taken care of by those three dynastic teams. Yeah. 